Welcome to The Way, I'm Donatello, and we have been reading Jesus Calling, a 365 daily devotional written by Sarah Young. It's about enjoying peace in Jesus' presence, and we are going to jump right into it. February 12th. I am ever so near to you, hovering over your shoulder, reading every thought. People think that thoughts are fleeting and worthless but yours are precious to me. I smile when you think lovingly of me. My spirit who lives within you helps you to think my thoughts as your thinking goes. So goes your entire being. Let me be your positive focus. When you look to me, knowing me as God with you, you experience joy. This is according to my ancient design when I first crafted man. Modern man seeks his positive focus elsewhere, in sports, sensations, acquiring new possessions. Advertising capitalizes on the longing of people for a positive focus in their lives. I planted that longing in human souls, knowing that only I could fully satisfy it Delight yourself in me. Let me become the desires of your heart. And this is from Matthew 123 and Psalms 37 4. Oh, this is so good. I just was talking about this today with someone. Um, so let's just jump right in. I am ever so near to you. God is always here. He is always here, right here, waiting for you to acknowledge him. And the thing is, is that we usually think that like we're waiting on God, but God is waiting on us. And so we sit here in this like purgatory being like, when is God going to come? Tell me what to do. And God's like, I've been standing here. How about you take notice? (laughs) Uh, And he says he's hovering over our shoulder, reading every thought. He knows every last thing we think. And that's why it's so crazy to me. How even myself, so prideful, and like things I didn't want to acknowledge to him that he already knew. And as soon as I acknowledged it to him, he removed that shame. He removed that feeling of those insecurities. And it became something that was free and lifted off me. But our mind tells us that we don't need to say that, that we can't say that, that God would stop loving us. How could he love someone who is like this? How could he, right? And so our mind tells us these things and our mind is moved along by the enemy being like, yeah, that's right. He doesn't need to know that because they want to keep you in chains, keep you shackled down and keep you from being free. Release, 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 release. It will set you free. And honestly, it's like setting it at the foot of the cross saying, I trust you. Here's this. This is my shame. This was so uncomfortable. I've never told anyone this or I told people this and they made fun of me, but I'm telling it to you and you can take that shame away because he does. And it's beautiful. People think that the thoughts are fleeting and worthless, but yours are precious to me. I smile when you think lovingly of me. My spirit who lives within you helps you to think my thoughts as your thinking goes so goes your entire being that is a huge statement in itself it's like the power of positive thinking you think positively positive things occur right you think negatively you're more likely to have negative things happen or continue to happen as you're thinking those negative thoughts and you get into the cycle where you just you start negative and then it continues to grow and grow and grow and it's just like this big negative ball and you're attracting negativity so now people are putting in that negativity towards you but all it takes is just one shift one little small shift small beginnings tiny beginnings one small shift creates a series of events that changes the outcome thinking of God and putting him at the forefront it does a few things it centers you it brings you back to your purpose and your direction because he guides our path he leads our direction right and then it gives you this peacefulness and this calmness to carry on this boldness to persevere and 
it's like you're activating your the Holy Spirit within you when you focus your mind on God. When you focus your mind on God, the more you do this, the more peace you feel. And when you feel this peace, it's like the Holy Spirit is radiating through your body and it's now being able to manipulate what you're thinking and what you say so that you say things that you wouldn't have said. You articulate things in a manner that you just would never have been able to do, right? All of a sudden you're writing a book and you've never even passed an English class. You're doing things above and beyond your pay grade because you're activating the spirit that's within you. And to get to the spirit, you have to go to the mind. The mind controls the spirit. If your mind is focused on God, you're in tune with the spirit. You're able to hear it. You're able to know when it's telling you to move, when it's telling you to stop. You're able to, to collaborate with it and say, okay, like, what do you want me to do today? To wake up and say, all right, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for another day alive. What would you like me to do today? What can I do for you, Holy Spirit? What can I do? and allow that feeling to move you. You can have an idea. Sometimes you can be wrong and that's okay. But most of the time you're right. <laughs> and so keep going and don't let those wrong times keep you from the times and the times and the times that are right. Because those are the times that matter the most. Let me be your positive focus always god if he's allowing it to happen it has a positive outcome even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment when you're in an apartment that you hate that you had to move into and now you're just like i don't understand how this could be but little did you know that six months later you would be leaving that apartment and and designing your perfect apartment that you didn't have to pay for that you now get to move into but you wouldn't have been able to get there if you had moved in any of the other apartments because you would have had to sign a longer lease. And so now the thing that looked so horrible that you couldn't understand has this beautiful outcome. But this negative thing had to happen. But it built this character now that when you're here, you appreciate it here because of where you were. And so this applies in many areas, right? We may You may be in it now and you can't see it but you will when you get to the other side. If you allow God to be your focus through all of this, you'll feel this joy that just overwhelms you and this confidence in God. You won't second guess yourself. You won't question. You will just know that God is doing this for a purpose. You may not understand why. You're not going to actually, but you'll know that he is doing this for your benefit and that you can be certain of 110 percent even though it seems crazy to everyone else because how in the world could this horrible thing be so beneficial to you and how can you be so peaceful while it's going on like what is wrong with you but you know better and that's why and when you know better you do better and that's the joy of the positive focus and having a focus. You can't accomplish any goal in life unless you have a focus. And if your focus is to build your relationship with Christ, he then needs to be that focal point. Otherwise, just like a ballerina spinning around, if you don't have a focal point, you can get dizzy, lose direction, maybe fall down, get distracted and, and, and stop. But if you have a focal point, you can just keep on twirling and twirling and twirling and going. And it's beautiful. It's literally poetry. And that's what your life can be like if you have a focal point. If you give yourself a focal point, God, your focal point, everything else is going to fall into line. And that's so beautiful. We seek things. That's right. Modern man seeks his positive focus elsewhere. Sports, sensations, acquiring new possessions. <laughs> Advertising capitalizes on longing of people for positive focus in their lives. Isn't that true? Self-help books. Uh, weight loss pills, all these things that people focus towards, and I'm guilty of it too. Do you know, like, I would buy things to make myself feel better, and then that instant gratification was over. Now I'm like, buyer's remorse, what am I going to do with this? Never use it. Use it once. Like, what's the point? When that money, it's like, it could have been spent somewhere better, and it was unnecessary, but 
now that joy, I, I crave more joy and more joy. So I want to buy more things and more things and bigger things. And now I'm comparing myself to other people because they have more and their things are bigger and better. And so now I have to compete. But why am I competing? Right? It just put me into this compete mode and I don't want to compete. I want to enjoy life. I want to be fulfilled. But when you're focusing all those things into all those other areas, you snowball into compete. You snowball into resentment. You snowball into unfulfilled. You're not whole. You're not complete. You're just, just trying to make it day by day. But with the focal point on God, you are more than anchored in to anything, any storm that comes your way. You won't be moved. You won't be moved. You will have such a happiness about you. The kind of happiness is happiness that pisses people off when they see it because they don't understand it. And they are so angry because they're so miserable and they want to be so happy like you are, but they don't get it, so they resent it. That's how happy you will feel. So this was a really good one. I'll see you guys back for February 13th.